and we're live. <laughs> we're live. So Indeed. I don't know like how much of this is going to be uh, online, uh, but at least it's a good uh, clean break so that when I go back into the notes uh, in Zoom, I'll know where to go. Yeah, to you pull can the find it. Trans- exactly. So, all right. So this is um, my discussion with my good friend and web developer, uh, George uh, Nicholas. Did I pronounce the last name properly? Nicolau. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Even if you butcher it, most people will. It's Greek, so I don't expect... Uh, U.S. people to be able to just throw that out there. It's fine. All you right. can as much as you want. So, so the, the talk today was, uh, this was a follow-up of uh, an article that we did for the Shala Productions uh, email newsletter, which if folks want to uh, subscribe, uh, we'll be able to provide the link later or in the description that's posted. Uh, don't mean to go out. Uh, so anyway, so getting back to the original point, which was in the email newsletter, uh, we did it we did a talk earlier about, <laughs> you know, critical actions to take with your video. And uh, we got like a, a good response from uh, readers of the, the tips that uh, George had mentioned of just making sure that the video is being seen properly on your website. Because the last thing you want to do is like have videos there that just sit there or it's not going after the right uh, audience members or be able to use it um, meaningfully if you're marketing and a, a service, a product, or just uh, talk about your company. So, uh, what, so this is more of a continuation of just uh, picking George Brain, which um, uh, a topic that came to mind was just like uh, how people are using videos on their website, like uh, just as a, like you know, which is like the I don't know if I'd say best practice or maybe like the the best way to uh, to be seen uh, online. Uh, the two examples I gave was one method is people would just Take an image, they post on the on like on a website, like on a blog, or maybe like in their uh, homepage, and then they would have the the URL link under it, so that when they click on it, it may take them to another page, uh, to the view, or maybe within their site. Or the alternative, which I've seen people do, is like if they have like a Vimeo account or YouTube, Wistia, or what have you, they'll put the embed code there for people to watch it. And it's the idea of just being considerate to uh, the audience to be able to watch the video and not have to like click through, you know, to get to the right page. And I'm my question is like, do oh, you view one better than the other? Uh, they're both the same in terms of the 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 ultimate goal of just being able to engage with the audience with the content they're looking for, or or am I, am I missing thing as to like what's what's the best way between the two or if there's like a better option okay so this is my take on this and it's a it's a personal opinion but it's backed by by what i know as a web developer and how google works i'm going to say google because honestly nobody else nobody cares about anything else it's just google <laughs> okay so, so so just as a reminder google owns youtube if anybody, your viewers or listeners didn't know what that is, um, YouTube is owned by Google, period. Okay. Having videos on your website is a great thing. Now, um, based on what you asked me, as in which is the best, do I, do I embed it on my site? Do I just keep it there? And the answer is very simple. It depends on your goal. The... For example, I'm going to use my blog as as an example. I have a blog. Don't go to my website. It looks really crappy. But (laughs) um, I do have a blog. And I mostly write um, tutorials, not long ones, that contain a little bit of wording, some code, if it's a solution to a problem that's more, you know, regardless related to web development. And I put in a video if I decided to do a YouTube video. Now, for anybody that has a website, the point of having a website is to have traffic and to have people engaged. And by the way, when we say engaged on a website, we actually mean um, people sitting there looking at it. And I don't mean they're zoned out and they're looking at it. I mean, you have content that they wanna read and they're scrolling down and they're reading whatever it is that you're writing. For example, our I don't know if you stick our interview on the website um, and people want to read it, Google will consider that, okay, 
a thousand people read this, they were sitting there reading it because I could tell they were reading it by going downwards um, because Google can detect things like that. Um, that just means that Google considers that the person is engaged in your content. Now, when using video, it's ideal to have it embedded on your website. I'll talk about, I don't know much about Vimeo, to be honest, but I don't consider Vimeo to be a search engine. I do consider YouTube to be a search engine. And I say that because when you go to YouTube and you're like, how do I do X? Like, I don't know, how do I break a, I don't know, potato? And people will actually type into Google, how do I break a potato? And they'll right. probably find a video, to be honest. Now, the thing is, um, when you do a video on YouTube and you have it embedded on your site, that will still be considered a view on YouTube, which means it will push you up in the YouTube algorithm, if that makes sense. Yeah. It will also be considered engagement on your website because people are sitting there watching the video at the URL shalalaproductions.com, for example. So, um, YouTube is a better example for videos, in my opinion, simply because YouTube is also a search engine and Google loves it when you use its products together. Like you you have, I've, I've done the work on your website to, to ensure that you're in Google, that your site is submitted, that people can find your website. And yeah. Google knows that it's me because I use my email to do that. And right. yes, I've invited you to that as well. And yes, you can see the data, but Google knows it's me. Um, which means if you have um, YouTube attached to that, like a YouTube video, and it sees Shalala Productions. And because I've set it so that it knows that Shalala Productions YouTube channel is a asset of shalalaproductions.com. And there's nothing magical you need to do to do that it's just a way of how you tell google and in wordpress for example there are plugins like rank math or yoast or other plugins that allow you to set up these sort of connections between oh this is a website that relates to shalala productions who also happens to have a youtube channel which is blah 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 whatever right. and i don't think they do similar things for vimeo because i don't think vimeo and google consider themselves rivals or because Vimeo is not a search engine. Vimeo is just a place for video. And yes, they have memberships and 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 stuff like that, but but they they aren't considered Google's rival. If if it were Yahoo, maybe, but I mean your best scenario is hopefully your videos are on 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 YouTube and they happen to be on your website as well. And you've done the connection or your developer has essentially done the connection to say Shalala Productions is the same, is the website for uh, this video uh, in YouTube, right? And it's also always good in YouTube to actually add the URL to a specific blog post that's related to a video or something in the description and stuff like that. But that's, that's a whole nother story. But best yeah. practice is we want people to be engaged. Now, if you want traffic on your website, because this depends on your goal, right? If you never had a website, if Shalala Productions didn't have a website and all you did was sit in YouTube, then your point is to get more viewers on YouTube, which means right. you'll focus on YouTube. But since you have a company website and you potentially right. want clients, hopefully, from whoever needs production services, whether it's in the States or elsewhere, I don't know. Um, they need to be more engaged in your website. And yes, you're a video production company and you you produce videos, obviously, but let them stay on your website to watch the video. They don't need to, if, if they find your YouTube channel randomly, that's fine. Because the yeah. point is you, you don't care if they watch you on YouTube. If they go to YouTube and type Shalala Productions and find you good for them. But the point is you want them on your website because at some point you want them to become potential clients i guess that's your goal right because if it wasn't then just close down the website and sit in youtube and just wait for people to comment on your videos but it, yeah. it depends on what you're actually trying to achieve if that makes sense um, yeah because like uh so to, to follow your point <coughs> it's almost like the goals may be the same like they're just trying to find people to either 
generate traffic to the website so that they could land the clients. But how they do it, it, it they go about it differently. Like so, to your point, like using YouTube effectively to, to drive the traffic to the website. I've and I'll be I'll admit I'm guilty of it too. Where I've seen people use Vimeo for the fact that maybe it's like aesthetically uh, they didn't want to like have like at the end of YouTube videos they would have recommendations to see other similar videos like that and would pull attention away. And, and that's fine as long as you can stop the user from leaving your website to go to Vimeo. Does that make sense? So if you embed see, the Vimeo video, if you embed the Vimeo video and I can't leave your website, it's considered engagement. It's just that Google will pick up on it, I guess, through analytics, but Google would be much happier if it were YouTube just because they can make the connection. But it doesn't mean that it won't be detected. <laughs> it's, I mean, I... I totally understand it, and, and it makes sense as to why. You, but you, the, the idea that. is, right, you don't want people to leave your website. I'll, I'll tell you a little right. story. So right. clients here in Cyprus, if you don't know where Cyprus is, that's fine. If you Google us, you may not find us, <laughs> but that's fine. The, the point here right, in Cyprus is people think that it's fantastic to put logo carousels on their website. Like these are our partners. We partner with Microsoft, Xerox, or whatever, right, which may or may not be true. But the worst thing they do is they put links to those to those icons that keep turning. Uh, the when I say carousel, it's just images going from left to right, if that makes sense, on the website. So the the worst thing they do is, or it's some association in Cyprus, like the Women's Rights Association or something random. Which is right. it's fine, but I consider it a bad idea to link those people because my if what your point is is to get people away from your website, then put links to other people's websites on your website. That's, but that's not going to help you because Google considers it to be, ah, oh, the user didn't find it interesting, he left. Whereas the reason the user may have left might have just been, oh, I want to go to the, to the, you know, to the website of Netflix because Netflix is a cool company. I need to go check out. But but you lose the traffic, so you have to try and like keep your user base on your website, try not to make them go somewhere else, whether that's YouTube or whatever. If your point is to actually, at some point in the journey, make that person, a uh, I could say client or whatever. Yeah. Like it, it depends on what your, what, what your, each website should have a journey. So when I go into the website, I should have a specific purpose. For um for an electronic shop like um when it, that sells like for Amazon right the the point is I, he he wants George Amazon wants George to search for his computer that he wants Amazon right. wants George to see it and be happy find all the parts that he wants click next and buy the thing and be done with it that's what Amazon wants Amazon doesn't care if you're sitting there for thirty hours or twenty five seconds as long as you buy something they don't care so for your website it would be maybe someone's looking for production services they need to know who you are why they should trust you because you've done this before you didn't wake up yesterday and just say oh i'm a production company let's do this you've done this before you have right. proof of testimonials saying people telling other people that um robert has done this before he has done this for x y and z here are some videos of what he produces which is why you have the video portfolio on your website for example and if someone's interested, then there's a way to get in touch with you either on social media or via like a contact form or whatever, right? Right. So it, it all depends on what the journey should be. And there should be a clear journey as, as in, I need to know who Shala Production is. If they are my kind of people, then I need to get in touch with them. And I need to know what services they provide, which is why you have your services all over the place, whether it's in the footer or in the menus or wherever. People that use the internet know where to find things they're looking for. I would be worried if I didn't see a services menu on a website like yours. I would stre right. I'd be stressed if I didn't see them, but it exists. Right. And you can, you can put them in any kind of categorization that you want, but it doesn't change anything. Now, right. this, this veers off of the topic of video, but right. again, it, it depends. Like your video should have a purpose, but the point of the video should be keep them on my website and make them be my client on my website. Don't take them any, anywhere else, because if you do, then the, you've lost them, if that makes sense. 
Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's almost like there's a science behind, like, not only creating the video, the content you want them to view, but content the, is, the marry that. Content is harder to create. Like, is it content yeah. that people want to see? Do I really want to see Robert setting up his camera? Maybe I do. Maybe I want to work at a production company uh, and I want to learn, like, for example, I don't know. I don't think you have this kind of content on your blog, but I mean, you you could do a blog post about, oh, this is how you set up vMix to get like, I don't know, great quality of audio or something random. I don't know. I, I have no knowledge of your industry, so I, I won't veer into that topic, but you can, no <laughs> you, you can, you can do you can do simple things like say you won't show everything obviously but you can you can show simple tutorials to people that will they'll have to read what you're telling them to do they'll have to go through like steps which means it will take them longer to read it which also means that google thinks that they're reading something interesting because time is passing right yeah and then in the end um if if they don't manage to do it they might or may not email you for example, on my blog, there's a solution for a problem with a page builder called Divi. There is actually no problem. It's just that people forget there's an extra step you have to take to get this done. I've written right. down the solution. I read, I wrote it about maybe two or three years ago. I still get views both on the video and the article. And I've gotten emails from people that want me to work on their Divi site just because they saw the solution and they couldn't figure out. Although the steps are very clear, like there's comments that people say, oh, this is awesome. It worked. Like it took me five seconds and it worked. Some people are just not tech oriented enough. And they just say, oh God, I'll just hire George and I'll be done with it. Like, I don't have to be bothered to figure this out. Like right. it, it happens. So whether that's video, because I, I started doing video long after I did the blocks. I actually went back and I did videos for the blog post that I'd done years ago because I noticed that people are, they don't like reading. They right. prefer to watch a video. And the specific video I'm talking about is like 30 minutes and people still watch it. I have 2000 views on that video a day and it's 2021. I did it maybe 2018, I think. So it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. It seems like there's like that delicate it, it, balance where it depends. Yeah. You have when you have like an article paired with a video like that, I know like the, the typical uh, approach I've, I've heard folks have mentioned, and you, please correct me if I'm wrong, where they'll take the article, they'll load it with the uh, appropriate keywords with whatever point or topic they're presenting, and the video would either, if not reflect what the writing's about, at least uh, reflect at least certain keywords that's integral to their message. So, I don't no. do that. And to be honest, yes, that's probably the right approach, but I don't really do that. And I still get the traffic. I think it's just more of, is the content something the user that came to your website was actually looking for? Because people yeah. that go to my website know I'm a person that uses Divi. If you don't know what Divi is, that's great. But people who know what Divi is, they know I'm in the community. They know that I use it and they know that I write code to fix issues with it because... right. Uh, so they they don't care whether it's the people that will read the article will require the technical stuff like um and the people that won't read it just are like oh, i'm not reading this i can just i can just watch him do it real quick and i i know where to go i'll do it myself but that all depends right and then i get the, the person that doesn't know how to do it or can't figure out and is like oh can you just do it for me and i'll pay you for it yeah i mean it's almost like heresy for folks to say like uh, keywords don't matter but i think in in the context of it's what we're not about, that it doesn't matter it's that yeah. people will find you if what they're looking for is what you have okay so it's almost like they that have that a set a set uh question or, or a set uh content they're looking for and if you have it out there they'll find you it's um, also got to do with branding and people mentioning you so let me give you a stupid example go to the site for pepsi you know pepsi the nice black poison that we drink every day, Pepsi, Pepsi Cola. I was gonna say, if you I go to the drinking. go ahead. <laughs> if you've seen their website, it's not the best. It's not the best. Yeah. Neither in speed, neither in what it looks like, in my opinion. Whatever. Pepsi, don't like kill me. Side. I like I like your poison. I drink it every day. It's fine. I couldn't care less about your website. But the reality is that nobody cares. 
It's because they have a brand. Nobody gives a gives gives a damn. They they don't care. It's just yeah, it's Pepsi. Nobody cares. Um, but for people like us, like I'm a freelancer, um, I need to prove to people that I know what I'm what I'm doing. And the only way I can do that is help people out without expecting payment initially. And then if it becomes a thing where they want to pay me for my services, then maybe that happens, maybe it doesn't. It, it, it all depends on what your client base is and what you actually want to accomplish with your video in the context of our conversation. Um, but right. your ideally, you should do anything possible to keep them on your website if the goal is to drive traffic to your website. If your goal is to drive traffic to YouTube because you don't have a website, well then, blast it on social. Like, yeah. And when you blast social actually for businesses, it's better to blast your website than to blast your YouTube channel. And that's simply because you actually want them to land on your website. Now, whether they watch your YouTube video on your website is a different story. As long as they land on your website, you'll be fine. Does it get that, that's your where, intention. Where people that don't have a website, but they use their uh, either Facebook business page or the LinkedIn business page as a surrogate as their website. That is, they that the is same tactic. That is so wrong. It's wrong in so many ways. Like it's it's good. It's okay. I mean, people do that, and I'm like, yeah, but having a website's more professional. And to be honest, do I really want to go and find Chalala Productions on Facebook and ask them if they could come and do my like um, I don't know, video clip for my new hot single that I'm gonna it's not going to happen. I'm not going to look for you on Facebook. I expect you to be a business in Boston that I know because I live in the US, for example. I'm just saying. Like, I will never go and look for a production company on Facebook. I just won't. I might go look for some random, I don't know, I don't know, random like uh, vases for my house on Facebook, but I wouldn't go there to find like I wouldn't go buy a computer on Facebook. Let's just say that. I wouldn't go buy a computer on Facebook, would I? I don't think I, so. I'll be a devil advocate here where, like, I actually, some people have reached me because they found me on Facebook, which, because <laughs> because what I did was, like, when I first created the Facebook page, part of the name of the company, I would add Boston Video Production Company, just because, like, if they type it and yeah. do a search, they could find me. I'm not really uh, familiar with how the, uh, the search engine works on Facebook, but but sometimes people would, would come to me because they they would find me through that can i ask but, you what kind of person that person is like is it a business person or is it just some rando that has a house in the u.s somewhere because it, uh, it like uh, yeah so I'm, I'm getting to that point so yeah, yeah so it turns out is yeah <laughs> get there and then but, we'll talk like yeah yeah but to your point i mean it, it turns out it was like an individual that was looking to um i think they either edit the video of whatever they're trying to like sell or promote themselves yeah An another context uh but this is more like a different point because it's like in belonging to different facebook mini groups that's like a video profession and that's yeah. because and that, that audience is a little bit different than where it's scattershot where you're dealing with the general public and yeah. um and people may just like search me after they you know encounter uh they encounter something yeah yeah and they would look i agree so it, so it, I mean, in that context, because it's within the Facebook platform, I could see how that how they would find me through that because it's in that near. Would you really go and find your heart surgeon on Facebook? No, you right. go to the frequent. You wouldn't go look for your heart surgeon in, on Facebook. Oh. Right? You'd go to the hospital, right? I mean, it doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I mean, although it's taken a different where like people say, "Hey, do you know this guy?" Like, but that's more like yeah, yeah. that that's a that's a that's more it's of a stocking sort of yeah, call the CIA kind of thing. But that that's yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean yeah. it's 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 just that I know like uh people do different things with the same goal, but I don't know if it's maybe it's just because it's more of a hardship thing that they don't have the investment or maybe the um the resources to look into having a website where I've heard all or the seen... all the hassle that it that it takes to have it because you need to add content. And luckily for me, you as a client actually add your own you don't come to say to me oh I add this blog post for me you you shouldn't do it yourself because you learned how to do it right um but like, people sign 
yeah, pe people sometimes find it a hassle to have a website. It's easier just to have a Facebook and just post something random. Okay, so. But I mean, the, it, the it, danger in that is just that if you if you put it on like on a social media site, because they're the ones that's controlling the, I mean, I'll, at any time they I'll, could change the, uh, the sayings so that, you know, yeah. you could be out. I, I want to right. say some. I want to say something, but I'm gonna be careful about because it sounds self-promoting, but I swear it isn't. So I'm gonna give you an example. A okay. client that I have recently acquired needed an e-shop to sell whatever she sells. I'm not gonna mention what it is. It's nothing nefarious. It's just it's for woman. It's it's nails, whatever you wanna. It's not nail polish. It's she has sells wholesale nails, whatever. Um. She has been working with Facebook for ages. She's made loads of money and she's paid loads for ads. On Sunday night, she called me because I'm I'm still I was still working on a issue, it wasn't done yet. She had already added some products, but not all of them. And I was gonna launch it soon. But she called me crying and she said, They blocked my Facebook page. Right. And I'm like, What do you mean? What did you do? What did you do differently that you didn't do? these many years like and she said right. well i i advertise the thing that i sell and i'm right. like do you have permission to sell it uh, to advertise it? and she says well why wouldn't i because i sell it already why wouldn't i have permission and i said so right. well that doesn't that's not how it works right right and her facebook was suspended and she couldn't have access to her clientele which are loads of people she has loads of followers loads of she's not an influence or anything but as a as a business she right. lost all her business in one night I've yeah. currently made her website live and it's working and functioning. People can buy her stuff. She's found right. a way to communicate to, to people that she knew that her Facebook has been taken down for some random reason. Right. And um, she's slowly coming back. But I mean, the thing of having an asset that you control, that's not controlled yeah. by some sort of entity, whether it's called YouTube, Facebook, whatever, because YouTube, Facebook can change policies and you're, no offense, but you're screwed, right? Right. Yeah. There's there's no other word for it. You're screwed. But right? she was literally screwed. She said, "But I don't have work to do. I'm not even gonna get up tomorrow morning because I can't go to work because my work is basically my Facebook page." Right. Regardless of the fact that I'm in the shop doing nails, for people, or whatever, right? So it sounds self promoting, but but you need an asset you control, and that is a website. Because if YouTube disappears tomorrow. I hope you have backups of your videos, but I'm I'm sure YouTube won't disappear. But what I'm saying is, if if Facebook says Shalala Productions can no longer have a page, if if the only avenue was Facebook, you would be dead in the water tomorrow, right? Like just, okay. like my client right now, she she was dead on Sunday. She was like, I'm I'm done. I'm out. I'm like, uh, there's no more work for me. And I I forced myself to finish her website to give her a platform to be able to work. I mean, it's 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 the thing that I, to add to your point. I mean, I always look at like redundancies, whether it's shoots or even just in terms of uh, messages you got there. I mean, for me, like, I mean, I would be bummed if that happened to me with Facebook, but because like I have other avenues to uh, to use, yeah. like I have the website. Um, there's you uh, have Vimeo. If they don't close Vimeo, Vimeo at the same YouTube. time, for example, or whatever. I mean, even if I have to post something, I mean, I still have a, a LinkedIn business account or a Twitter account. So there's. I mean, yeah, exactly. there's other ways to get the message out there, but I mean, and I the reality is, they 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 won't pull down your website because the website you pay for. There's no one controlling the website but you, and the person that's hosting it for you, or the company that's hosting it for you. They can't tell me I'm gonna pull down Shalala Productions because whatever, unless you do something obviously very shady, which I know you won't do. But I mean, you know, they can't come and just say, "Oh, somebody reported you. We were locking down your website." Right. They have to actually investigate before they do that. I'm not throwing any shade against Facebook. I don't know the circumstances of why they locked her out. I don't care, to be honest. My issue is I, I don't think you should put all your eggs in one basket. And especially in a basket that you don't control, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, I was put it, like put it on your website. Because like with Facebook Live, for some reason, like I I was denied access to that tool. So I had like, oh, I remember account. those days. Yeah. I remember those days. So I was like, why is this guy coming up twice now? And he's got different clothes in the one profile picture. I thought they actually hacked you initially. I thought, yeah. So I had to account. like, 
when I create the account, I had to say that it was me and I had to create a video like, hey, you know, you know, my my personal account got fro. I can't I can't post any uh, live videos. So I had to create this and I had to like. Did you ever figure out why? Did you ever figure out why? Uh, I think it was because at that time I had uh, got like a VPN account. And so if I were doing, uh, I was so doing streaming on, were, yeah, I was different because so like, they thought you were hacking. Okay. Because like I they was on my, uh, yeah, because in the green room, when I had it running, I had to come back here. I don't know what I had to do, but I forgot I had the VPN on here. So it was coming from two different sources and I'm trying to explain them, but because of Facebook, it was hard to find like a real person to talk to. You don't, you don't and, talk to real people on Facebook. <laughs> I mean, so, there is, but you won't find them. Yeah. So like I had, and so there was like some ways you could, but you had to have a business account. But because like during the pandemic, so many people were contacting, they kept changing the way how to contact them. Like, so that's yeah. when I had to create the second account. And eventually I got out of, out of the, the, the Facebook jail or whatever you call it for Facebook live. Facebook I mean, I still jail, had access oh to the first account, but <laughs> I couldn't like do Facebook live, which killed me because, you know, if I want to do it's like a live stream do. for them. Yeah. yeah. So it drove me nuts. So, um, and I had to but like, again, it's because it's not your platform. Tomorrow they can decide something right. and tell you and just say, okay. exactly. So it, the, to the larger point that when you have like other avenues to post your content or at least have control as to where it goes, it, it's, it makes a big difference, which I marry the, uh, the advice that George has says, like if you have a website, be able to control your content, you know, it gives you more opportunities, options to be able to distribute the meal. And for me, it's always good to have um, a backup uh, workflow so that, let's say, for example, like for whatever reason, I can't get YouTube running to post videos. So like if you have a Vimeo account or any other uh, video hosting uh, accounts, you can post, you can put it up there and you can still post it on your website. It's just a, a different workflow to whatever you can do to get your YouTube up and running. Um, as well as the follow up the other point, it really boils down to like, what's your goal? Um, you know, what are you trying to do to help you determine which course of action? So most people um, don't know what, what their goal is. And that's why they do, they make yeah. many mistakes. And the first thing yeah. you should think about is what is my goal? What do I actually want to achieve? Cause there's no point having a YouTube channel. If your point was to make sales on your website, there's no point. What is the point of having, unless the thing you're selling is like a rocket and you have to tell people how to set up the rocket i mean <laughs> you would probably did a video for that but you what i'm saying like if you're selling pants you don't really need a video to tell people you're selling pants it's pants they can figure it out it's two holes you put your legs in it it's fine you're done <laughs> like there's no you know yeah i mean for me like when i have a youtube channel the, the overall goal is just to let them know that oh we're a video production business and this is the work we do I think in terms of like the content we put up there, it just, it, it constantly for, evolves. For you, it's... for you as a video production company, showing of what you've done, which actually is like real footage of this is, this is an interview we did for someone. This is a X, Y, Z we did for someone. This is that for you is valuable because people actually need to see, do I like the video they make? Or is it just like, did he make a, you know, a low budget production of, of, of whatever he did? And I, I'll never use Robert because, uh, I don't know, it was low quality or whatever. Or he has like, bad breath. What, what, whatever, you know. No, videos, they can't tell you about breath from videos. But what I'm saying is, um, if if I see a video, I'm like, oh, that's garbage. I'm not working with Shalala. Uh, I mean, if you if you thought your stuff was bad quality, you wouldn't have them straight up on the website. You do, which means you've done this before and you know it's high quality stuff. So, yeah, exactly. Hey, I'm getting torched here. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, to your point, it's 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 always a, a matter of just making sure, you know, the the means you have, the, the post videos, or as, to really know like what your goals and purposes are and just to be yeah. able to, to use that advantage. Um, it's for every business. They have to know what, what their goals are because that's how you'll decide how your website's going to look or what it's going to do um, based off of what you want to achieve, which could be anything. Right. Could be anything. And it's, it's, a, it's a common thing we share. I mean, I know like you, you yeah. drill it through your client's head with the website for me. It, it's, I the, try. it's the first thing I try to ask. 
yeah i try but it's like it's i've actually said to a client and i know this is going to sound bad but i've said to him you have to rethink this because if you can't sell me on it like if you can't like i i ask them can you please list can you please list the services you provide i don't even ask for a description can you list them and they say to me not really and i'm like what do you mean you want a website you want to start providing a service but you can't actually tell me what it's about that doesn't sound right maybe you should think about the service you're going to provide you should give me some sort of proof that you are actually an authority on providing the service in your case it's production and you have your videos as proof and your testimonials from your previous clients and whatnot if my client comes and says i need a website i'm like okay so tell me what's your value proposition why are you better than the guy next door prove to me that you are who you say you are because i don't know you unless they're like a brand in cyprus i wouldn't know who they were because i freelance so i'm in a house I, i don't i don't know who people are i don't care to be honest so unless they can prove who they are it's not going to work and um people sometimes say to me oh i have to actually think about this before i give you any content i'm like yeah that's what i'm saying think about it before you give me any content when i see the content i can make a nice website for you based off of what you're telling me you do and yes i need photos and yes i need content but you have to be able to sell me on it because if you can't then there's a problem because it's your business yeah i think that's 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 the bottom line that's is like exactly. a lot of people just kind of get consumed with they need a video or they need a website but then okay you create what are you gonna do with the next and that's where like i find the disconnect yeah. is is that you know what, what's the point of create a video if, if you're not going to use it to your advantage to whatever your yeah. marketing goals are or uh with the website as to like how you brand yourself as to like what you stand for or what you do um it just yeah, drives exactly. me nuts but that's i don't want to go into the, the segment of what yeah. drives rob nuts but yeah i mean it's just yeah they really need to, f- to focus on the goals purposes and then from there it, it helps you make decisions or at least be able to know like uh which path to take to execute i'll give them my professional opinion on what i think of their of their story the story they want to tell with their website i'll tell them that this isn't like maybe it's not feasible maybe what they're trying to you know is not the right way to go about it because for example someone might say to me look um i want people to buy my product and i want there to be a pop up every time they log onto the website and i want the pop up to come up when they click the about page although they've seen it already on the homepage i'm like no they've seen it already don't bug them they're going to close the website down it's the simplest of things like i if i get annoyed and i'm the programmer what about the other guy that's just the guy yeah all right like well to, yeah that's it right that's it that's it basically you have to think about things before you do them and you have to use video appropriately to get the message across it's not just making a video randomly all right so the takeaway folks uh, and please correct me if i'm i'm if i'm wrong here uh george is use your noggin as to know what your what your goals and purposes are yeah it's, from it's there, very important yeah and from there it helps you decide like which method or the way to go either to meet your marketing goals or your goals for what your website is uh in terms of like if we use videos example whether yeah we should use an embed uh there with you if you're trying to like generate traffic with google and youtube or if it's a case where if with i know like some people are a little bit caught up with the aesthetics of how the video looks if you're going to use the vimeo or something that that like, that's fine the whole yeah. point is that's fine the whole point is where do you want engagement to be counted do you want the engagement to be counted as engagement on your website if so keep them on your website if your point is to count engagement on youtube don't have a website just have them sit on youtube and watch you but if if you're like shallow productions you have a website so your point is i want to keep people on my website because if you do then google's going to say okay this guy was reading rob's website for 20 minutes what was he reading about there must be something important in there and google doesn't know what that important thing is it just assumes because people were sitting there like reading it that it's important google can't actually read what it says you can be talking about 
you know, coffee cups in the morning. It doesn't matter. As long as people are sitting and reading it, it's considered important, right? Do you feel like if they use the embed for YouTube, it's like a double whammy, like they're it is. pulling them it on is. the website and if they're viewed because it's yeah. an extension yeah. of YouTube with them. I am Google. I love you for putting in my YouTube videos. Um, so I'm going to come and visit you more often. Three days, every three days instead of every 25 days because I'm Google. Is, it's like a trade-off where I know like people have complained about YouTube because of they don't want to lose people to going into another site. But the fact that because YouTube is strong, it, on search engine for videos because of its relation with google um it's almost like a trade-off like a yeah I, I do it myself right i, I want to figure out a solution to a problem and because i know i'm not going to read a solution to a problem because i'm busy working i actually go to youtube if, assuming i'll find a video that shows me how to do it because i could scrub through the video i don't even look at the whole video i just look at the point that i'm looking for um and then i say okay that's what he did i close it that's not very great traffic for the guy that made the video because I immediately close it when I find the solution. But my point is people that look for video will go to YouTube automatically. But for you, it's your website, it's your company. They have to know you're in Boston. They have to know what to do and keep them on your website as long as you can. That's the takeaway here. You heard it here a lot. Well, or a or re <laughs> or, or replay or or written is the uh, George's point. So um, that's about it. But I, again, you know, uh, George, what's the best way if people have all questions uh, to some of the points uh, as to how they can reach you? Well, to be honest, because they're going to be um, on your channel, they can they can reach out. But I mean, I do have social media, which I don't use loads of social media, but I do have a t Twitter and my handles like George Web Dev and uh, the G, the W and the D are caps. So George Web Dev is my twitter that's probably where you'll find me if you want to chat with me i have a linkedin but i'm not always on i have a facebook and i'm never on unless i'm talking <laughs> to rob um and yeah that's it um but yeah you guys can can find me mostly on twitter because it's just easier to like type type quick responses and be done with it because we work during the day, so. What he says. So yeah. Uh, on that note, uh, we'll have the uh, link to the the prior discussion and article uh, that folks can catch uh, from our early conversation, uh, as well as uh, folks can either read or replay the uh, video. Or who knows? Maybe I might just do the article. But hey, uh, this will be edited out. Um, but all right. So thanks again, George. Yeah. And no uh, I'm Happy sure to we'll, have a chat. we'll yeah. continue the, the call soon. Yeah, we'll be in touch. Sure.